Okay. So let's uh, move on and let's talk a little bit more detail about the microbes in EM. Um, as you can see on the, there are three major groups and then sort of a catch-all group at the bottom. Um, let's start with the first one, the lactic acid bacteria. Many of you are probably familiar with the lactic acid bacteria. They have been used in food processing for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, they're used to make sausage and yogurt, probably some of the most common known forms of lactic acid bacteria. They're also present in a lot of wines and beers. And um, they produce, as a byproduct of their metabolism, metabolism lactic acid, which can be a very powerful um, agent against undesirable microbes and also can affect the pH of the environment that they're in. Um, and then there's yeast, and the yeast uh, in this um, brew are the beneficial yeast, uh, commonly used to make beer and wine. And I've noticed there's a lot of um, misunderstanding or misconceptions about yeast. There's a lot of fear and concern around yeast because of yeast infections and candida infections that um, are, are uh, pretty common in, in society today. Uh, I know that the prevailing uh, diet for someone who has a yeast infection is to try and get rid of all yeast in your diet, to try not to eat fruits and sugars and things like that. Um, the reality to me, and, and let me just give my disclaimer here, I'm not a doctor, um, I'm not a medical professional, so please you know, double check anything I say today and, and uh, you know, talk to your healthcare provider. Um, I'm just gonna give you some of my own observations and uh, they might be full of holes or, or out, outright wrong, so don't, don't base any major decisions on what I'm saying today. Um, but in my observations of yeast, yeast are a very, very um, prolific organism. They are everywhere. They're, they're all over us right now, whether you have a yeast infection or not. Um, and uh, we're going to get into a little bit more about these beneficial and undesirable microbes. But in the world of yeast, there are definitely very um, clearly undesirable yeast, which as a byproduct of their metabolism, produce substances which are irritable and toxic to our skin and to our digestive system. But there are also beneficial yeast which produce vitamins and produce substances that feed our tissue. And so the idea that all yeast are bad and the way to solve a yeast infection is to try to rid yeast of your life, which is never gonna happen anyways, is kind of an illusion. So um, with this technology, what we advocate is you get the good yeast there because yeast are going to live in a certain type of niche. There's certain types of environments on our body and the soil and the environment where, where it's perfect for yeast. It's got the right type of food for yeast. It's got the right type of uh, oxygen or lack of oxygen for yeast. And so trying to not have yeast live in an environment or a space where they have evolved for a long time to live perfectly in is very difficult to achieve. So the idea is get the right type of yeast living there, the yeast that doesn't cause irritation and doesn't cause damage, and you have the symptoms of yeast infection go away. So um, yeast are commonly used, as I mentioned, to make beer and bread and wine. Um, and the, the type of yeast that we use are food grade uh, yeast that are beneficial. Um, don't get me wrong, also, any benefit, you know, too much of a good thing is a bad thing. So I'm not, I, I certainly don't want to say that too much of any good microbe is, is also not a problem. Things need to be uh, applied and used with, you know, thought and some design behind them, and, uh, and then you can get good results. Um, the next category of organism known as phototrophic bacteria, also known as photosynthetic bacteria. Um, specifically, we use purple non-sulfur bacteria, or PNSBs. Um, these purple non-sulfur bacteria are uh, similar cousins to blue-green algae, um, although they are not blue-green. They are reddish-brown, purplish color. 
uh, but they do use energy from the sun and turn that energy, that, that, that light wavelength or energy or photon into organic molecules, into um, ATP and food, which feeds our cells and other, other microbes, um, or, or if at all. But another point about these phototrophic microbes is, and this is, this is theory and conjecture, it has not been thoroughly researched in a controlled way, but I, I think that our use of herbicides have a particular effect on these phototrophic bacteria, and so we are seeing a significant decrease in phototrophic bacteria populations uh, worldwide as a result of those, those substances being used prolifically. Uh, the next category, other beneficial microbes, this is sort of a catch-all, but it's a very, very important concept um, for the technology. In science and microbiology, we have a, this tendency, as I mentioned, to want to do things in pure culture because we can control them, we can understand them, they are a lot more predictable. Um, we do not make EM in pure culture on purpose. If you, make, if you take all the microbes in EM and you grow them in pure culture and you combine them, you will not get the same results as you do by doing a natural fermentation that allows wild organisms to be a part of the mix. Wild organisms meaning they weren't cultured in a laboratory. So um, we take this fermentation through a specific process that allows, and we, we, so we select or hand select very high quality natural raw materials that we know have certain types of beneficial microorganisms on them, and we introduce those raw materials into the process to allow the growth of these wild organisms.